I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to this month's episode of Clearly. Thank you for joining us. For this show, I have invited Mr. Gary Dukes, Director of Parks and Recreation, along with members of his leadership team, which I will have him introduce shortly. The Douglas County Parks and Recreation Department welcomes you to explore nearly 2,000 acres of parkland and other recreation facilities in Douglas County you will have no difficulty finding an activity that suits your interest. With 2019 now upon us, I have invited Mr. Dukes and his team to give us an inside look at what the Parks and Recreation Department is responsible for and what the citizens need to know in reference to our Douglas County Parks. Welcome to Clearly. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you all for being here. Um, you guys are here today. Uh, Director Dukes, could you please just tell me who you have with you, who's joining us today, your staff? Yes, ma'am. I have Tracy Ivey, who is our Recreation Superintendent, and I had Chad Griffin, who is our Youth Sports Coordinator for the county. Wow. Welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, Director Dukes, I have some specific questions for you. Just wanted okay. to kind of just tell me, what is your um, title, your formal title for the county? I am the uh, Director of Parks and Recreation for Douglas County. Where is your office located? We are located in the old courthouse, uh -huh. uh, which is downtown Douglasville. Wow, that's a nice pristine building. I had an opportunity to visit you in your offices. I feel like I'm in Florida when I walk <laughs> in. It's really nice. It's, uh, it's a historic building mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, were able to do some uh, remodeling and uh, it's very nice. We, we love being in that building. I know you have a, a, a great uh, background in parks and recreation. Uh, I've talked to you in, in, um, in length and you talked about your experience. How many years of experience in park and, parks and recreation do you have? Uh, professionally 45 years in wow. parks and recreation. That's mm -hmm. great. And how long have you been here in Douglas County? Uh, 13 years. 13, uh, that's a lucky number. I like 13, <laughs> that's a good We number. hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and tell me a little bit about uh, those 13 years. Have they been exciting here in Douglas County? Have you seen things change or can you just talk about a little bit, just, just, just we, a little overview of your 13 years? Sure. Uh, we have had a lot of change. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we have grown mm -hmm. significantly in 13 years. We started with a small staff <laughs> and uh, we uh, were asked to bring a better quality of life to the citizens of Douglas County. And we have done that both in programming mm -hmm. uh, at uh, our Deer Lake Center and at the Aquatic Center. Uh, we uh, have added professional people to our staff and most of our professionals have recreation degrees. So uh, That's excellent. We, we take a lot of pride. We, uh, we join our professional organizations. We are members of Georgia Recreation and Park Society, and we are also the members of the National Recreation and Parks Association. So uh, we're proud of our department, and we're proud to serve the citizens of Douglas County. Wow, you, you hit on some of those organizations and departmental uh, parks and recreation affiliations. That was my next question, but oh. this is, we have something new, uh, Parks and Recreation Committee under my administration. Can you tell me if that's been beneficial? Has it made a difference in the life of Parks and Recreation, and I'm, I'm quite sure our citizens would be interested in that response. Right. Um, it's been very beneficial. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the better changes that I've seen in our department over the 13 years. Um, we, uh, we are able to bring issues to the uh, Recreation Committee that uh, concern us and that would benefit the citizens of the county. 
we bring those forward uh, most of the time they're approved through the committee and then brought to the board mm -hmm. for their yes. approval so we've been able to uh, accomplish items that we had before been tried trying to get uh, uh, done for years wow. so uh, it's been very beneficial to not only our staff but to the citizens of the county Thank you, that was, a, uh, thank you for that response. Talk about, let's talk about some of the different divisions within uh, Parks and Recreation. I know you all have, it's kind of sprawled out there and you all have various positions and you have, I call it your official leadership team that's in place and uh, Parks and Recreation is huge in this county. Can you talk about some of those divisions? I can. Um, Parks and Recreation in its nature is uh, very diverse. Uh, it's a very diverse profession. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you not only have the administrative duties to uh, perform budgeting and uh, purchasing and, and those items, but you also have your recreation division, mm -hmm. which performs all the programming and special events, uh, works with community organizations, and uh, Tracy Ivey. Our, our recreation superintendent is over that division. Uh, we have our youth sports division and we have Chad uh, with us. Mm -hmm. And Chad uh, works with all the athletic associations and makes sure uh, we have a good rapport with the wow. associations. And uh, also uh, Chad is our link for maintenance, any issues that uh, the associations might have. He works with them and works with our park superintendent mm -hmm. to get those uh, corrected or identified. And uh, the parks superintendent is not with us today. He, mm -hmm. uh, he had some uh, knee replacement, so he was not able to attend. But our parks division is a huge division. Yes. Uh, they take care of all of our fields, uh, all of our picnic areas. and. Uh, it's a, it's a big job to maintain that and keep turf on our fields. So uh, that's another division we have. Uh, we also have our aquatics uh, division and uh, we'll be talking to uh, Jim Gay a mm -hmm. little later and Jim will be with us to discuss what we have going on down at our aquatics uh, center. And then we have uh, our security force. Yes. And we will have uh, Kelly Corkle to come in. She leads our security organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll be talking about what all of our security officers do in, in our department. Wow, what a major operation. How many employees do you have? We have over 100 uh, wow. employees in the department. Uh, approximately 40 full-time, and then a number of part-time, and then we, of course, have uh, seasonal yes. uh, and uh, lifeguards, playground people that uh, uh, come during the summer to help us with our playground programs. Well, the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County really appreciate what you all do. It's a lot of work involved to, to keep the, the fields ready and all the events that you all host, the holiday events. We have something coming up, I think, a daughter and father's dance very That's soon. Right. So it's a lot of coordination that goes into this. And sometimes if the citizens don't see it, they're probably thinking, well, what is moving? But it's a lot of moving parts in parks and recreation. And that's why I wanted to spotlight you all first as we kick off into 2019. I think that's very important. You are the ones that are, I call the game changers of Douglas County, and you get a lot of things done. But sometimes you don't get the recognition that you deserve. So let's talk about some other things. Uh, finance, your budget. What is your budget like? Is it how, how you oversee this department? Do you generate much revenue? or We can just talk about revenue. We, we do have a, uh, of course, our budget is approximately $3 million for mm -hmm. our general budget. And then we have, our, of course, our aquatics budget, about a half million dollars uh, a year. And uh, yes, we do generate funds. So we take a lot of pride in what we can generate. Mm -hmm. We do that by uh, some of the programs we offer. Uh, we have a revenue attached to those to bring back some money to offset some of the costs for the taxpayers. Yes. And we bring in approximately $400,000 a year just to offset the cost of operation of the department. That's excellent. That's excellent. And talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, SPLOST. 
I know we have SPLOS. We were fortunate. The citizens voted in 2016, and that was just amazing for us. It was it just was. like a, uh, the citizens have been the wind beneath our wings in this moment in time. So let's talk about the SPLOS and things that are coming down the pike and the things that we've done thus far. And let's hit on some of these parts, such as Bill Arp, all those old parks, and, and let's tell the citizens what we have uh, in store okay. for them. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, we, we just got out of a uh, splashed meeting this morning, uh -huh. as a matter of fact, with an update of where we are and, and what we're doing in the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, we are, first let's start with Fair Play Park. It's one of those older parks that uh, you just mentioned. And Fair Play Park is getting three new uh, fields to be lit. Uh, we had some old lighting down there mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we've been trying to get replaced. So through the splashed, we are lighting three new fields, be brand new poles, brand wow. new light fixtures, and that's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. uh, that park will also get a brand new concession stand mm -hmm. and restroom facility. <coughs> so those will be major improvements. We hope to have funds to also do the fencing Wow. We're, we're going to wait and see how that works out, but uh, we hope we hope to have the funds to do some new fencing and new dugouts down there. Mm -hmm. But we definitely are uh, able to do the lighting and to do the uh, new restroom and concession. Wow. And then uh, another older park is Bill Arp. Yes. And we'll be doing... Uh, how old is Bill Arp? Is uh, it 50 years old? It's, it's probably pushing 50 years wow. old. Uh, at least 40, I'm sure. And uh, that's, that was part of the problem with some of these facilities. They were just so old and they were, they were built, some of it piecemeal back in the day when people, you know, got donations and got labor from <laughs> citizens to help put the electrical in. And, yes. But we're, we're growing out of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Douglas is uh, so progressive now. We're, we're coming into the metro age, if you will, yes. and we need to do a little catch up, and we are. We are under your leadership, by the way. Thank and you. we, we appreciate, uh, while we're talking about that, we appreciate your support of the Parks and Recreation Department because you've been very supportive, and Thank we you. appreciate it. But at Bill, uh, Bill Arp, we're getting a new uh, restaurant concession oh, stand there as well. And um, that will be very beneficial for uh, Bill Arp. Um, Deer Lick Park, you have some new tennis Deer courts. Deer Lick Park, we have new tennis courts going in. Those uh, existing courts will be demolished. And we will have five new courts with a new restroom facility and a new picnic area there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, Deer Lick will get a little upgrade. And you have the senior exercise equipment in Deer Lake Park, too. We put new, uh, outdoor, new seniors. outdoor senior exercise equipment there. And as we speak, new outdoor uh, exercise equipment is being installed at Clinton, the walking track. Wow, At the uh, Nature Preserve. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we are also already have a restroom uh, concession facility being installed at Boundary Waters Park. That's Mm -hmm. and also lights for the new soccer field. So uh, we're getting lights for the soccer field and a new restroom concession for not only the soccer, but for the football field. Wow. So we, got, we do have a lot going on. Uh, the the uh, senior center and the community. The Ooh. senior center and the uh, multipurpose uh, recreation center are both under design. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a meeting yesterday uh, with uh, the architect and uh, he is well underway with those designs. Mm -hmm. And of course, the multipurpose recreation center will be uh, located at Boundary Waters, right next to the aquatic center. And it will have two full-size uh, high school gymnasiums in it with some programming rooms and a walking track for indoor walking during the uh, inclement weather. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's gonna be a, a tremendous addition for the citizens of Douglas County. Yeah. And of course, the, uh, the new senior center will be out in Lithia Springs. And uh, it'll have multi-purpose multi uh, recreation rooms and an indoor pool. Uh, wow. so, so exciting things happening in parks and recreation. 
you all are doing a great job and Douglas County is on the horizon and I, I appreciate what you just said we are definitely leaving our teenage years here in Douglas County That's we right. are now becoming an adult so thank you so much for your leadership and your amazing team I have a question for our uh, superintendent recreation our superintendent of this Tracy Ivy tell me a little bit about your role what you do and how you impact Douglas County in parks and recreation I'll be happy to um, first of all thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be here this morning uh, okay. We have a very diverse uh, set of set of operations just within the rec division. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, community programs and special events. We have athletic programs and special events, and we also have the therapeutic section, wow. uh, where we reach out to special needs individuals in the community, senior citizens, and those things. So we have a, a fairly diverse organization within the organization itself. Uh, we are uh, the headquarters, basically non-administrative, but for the department out at Deer Lake Park. Mm -hmm. uh, our phone number is advertised across the, across the board in our newsletter and on our website, so a lot of people in the community uh, call us for information that we pass on to the aquatics coordinator or we pass on to the youth sports coordinator or to the director's office. Uh, we handle a lot of uh, rentals. And then, of course, we do a lot of special uh, special events. In fact, we we hit the ground running every January. We do have the fair, the uh, fair princess ball that you mentioned coming up uh, next month, mm -hmm. and uh, we just have one thing after the other. So we're off to a fast start. Tell me a little bit about the newsletter. I love it. What is the name of it for the citizens' sake? Uh, the newsletter. Uh, the name is called the Park Bench, which yes. is uh, very appropriately titled, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a quarterly publication where we try to uh, keep uh, citizens informed of the current programs, dates, locations, rental fees. Uh, we have our uh, facility rate structure in there. We have all of our staff, our key staff contact information in there. And uh, it's just a good piece of uh, uh, media for us to reach out to the community. Okay, um, anything else besides uh, what's coming further in the spring? I believe you have a Easter egg extravaganza. Is that where yes, it's Yes, ma'am. Easter uh, egg hunt. We, we have an extravaganza in, uh, in April. Uh, sometimes it's in March, depends on when Easter, when Easter falls. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, you know, we're gearing up with the plans for that. We have the Fair Princess Ball, as I mentioned, in February. Uh, we are underway with uh, registering for Lithia Springs baseball and softball. And that's kind of an oddity. It's run out of my division, out of my section, but it's really a youth sports program. And I'm sure at some point we'll look at how we uh, mesh that a little bit differently down the road. Uh, but we, uh, we're preparing for our summer camp program that uh, will kick off registration for that in April. Wow. Uh, and we'll be full, that program will be fully registered uh, with participants in, within a week. So uh, this year, fortunately, it's, uh, our registration will start prior to spring break, so it gives folks an opportunity to go ahead and get registered before they leave out of town. Oh, that's excellent. So uh, our uh, Winter Basketball League will kick off officially this Saturday with its first round of games. And uh, we have about 500 kids participating in that program as well. And that's run by Brandon Davis, our athletic coordinator. Wow. Ooh, so a it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot of activity. Uh, to complement the, the aquatics and the, what the Gary's doing in his office with the SPLOS program and what Chad does with his uh, youth sports programs. And oversight of that, it's, it's a lot to, uh, to juggle and mesh together. Wow. Some of the members of your team, Tracy, who's on your staff? You, can you, and you mentioned Brandon. and Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me a little bit about their roles quickly? Just what Certainly, I sure can. Uh, Brandon is our uh, youth, ath uh, youth athletic coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't deal with the associations like Chad does, so he's, his role is a little bit different. He runs our winter youth basketball. He runs our summer uh, basketball programs. Uh, he does a track meet for us, and he's our liaison with the Georgia Recreation and Park Association wow. to enter our participants in the uh, district and state meets. Mm -hmm. uh, we always have representation there. Uh, Jessica Morgan is our therapeutic coordinator. Yes. And she's very, very busy with that. We have a therapeutic board, it's a volunteer board that uh, we coordinate a lot of our activities with. And that's a lot of moving parts in that organization within, within that, uh, the Special Olympics. Uh, we have 167 current registered athletes in that program. And when I say current, they all have to provide a medical. And mm -hmm. we go by that number to tell you exactly how many active. And these are all adult age uh, participants. Wow. They're all out of high school. Okay. We're very proud of our therapeutic division because those are, uh, those are not always accepted in parks and recreation mm -hmm. due to the uh, nature of the programming. Uh, it takes a lot of work and it takes dedicated people to 
Mm -hmm. uh, to provide those programs, and we're very proud of uh, Jessica. She does a great job. Wow. Okay. She's young, and she's, she's got a big heart, and uh, she knows how to go about her business, so we're very pleased to have, have been able to get her on board. Wow. Uh, we also have Tammy Cochran, who's uh, about an 11-year veteran of, the, yeah. of the, uh, the department. She started off as a part-time employee and really spills her heart into whatever she does. Um, she knows our department in and out okay. in terms of the recreation division. She knows it in and out. Um, she does our summer camp program. She uh, does almost an event every month, it seems like, uh, from the Easter program to the you know, mother and son hike. We have a campery in the fall. Uh, she assists me with our Christmas at Deerlick program, which you've been a, a visitor for that in the last yes. couple of years. So uh, we're very, very busy. And then in addition to that, we have some part-time uh, guest services uh, individuals that come in and work in the evenings, and, and then they cover our Saturday schedules. Wow. So. You know, um, Gary, when you submit your uh, weekly report for Parks and Recreation, I take the time. I take the time to read all the reports from the directors, and I'm telling you, I'm blown away when I get to your section. I said, "How do they get all this done? It's just so much. Every park field, this, that." I said, "You all do a lot," and I am so, so uh, fortunate that the board of commissioners uh, have you all on our team. Well, thank you very much. We have we have a lot of dedicated, very dedicated mm -hmm. personnel. I look at the list. I said, "I they have to go first this year. Kick it off." Chad, yes, thank you so much, Tracy. Thank that was you. A great response. It's a pleasure. Chad, you are a sports coordinator. Yes, you know, there was a deficiency when I started uh, in 2017 when we kicked off. You know, there was a little back and forth. We needed someone to come in, take the bull by the horns, and, 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 and tighten that area down. Talk about your role and what you do here in Douglas County. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I am the youth sports coordinator. It's a brand new role. I say about a year and a half to two years old. Mm -hmm. um, my main job is to deal with all the associations in Douglas County. There are about 12 associations, um, baseball, softball, football, uh, soccer. And I deal with those associations on a daily basis. Um, and uh, one of my main jobs with that group is I, we created a youth sports manual several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I implement that on a daily basis. Where are you housed? Where's your office? My office is at the old courthouse. Okay, wow. And you've been a liaison between county and the youth uh, associations in the county, and you said about two years now. And then also, do you enforce the rules about football? Tell me a little bit about the sports, though, how you interact. In it. Yes, ma'am. Um, just last night, we had our first 2019 uh, spring meeting to get ready for, for baseball. And uh, we went over in that meeting, we went over uh, the rules for the year, any changes that we're going to you know, implement. Um, they sign, they're coming, they sign their yearly contract, and uh, we work on, you know, scheduling. Douglas County, we just recently took over scheduling the past couple of years. Wow, And great. I think it's been, it's going to be a good thing moving forward. So for all the baseball, softball, and, and uh, soccer, we're going to take over all that scheduling. So. And then you manage the financials as well? To yes, ma'am, sure I check so. their, usually about every quarter we check their financials and make sure they're paying their bills and paying who they need to pay and that kind of thing. And you know I'm a big proponent of safety and I yes, think you're responsible for guidelines and making sure that the safety guidelines are enforced. So how has that been Going back to the out? youth sports manual, there are guidelines in there uh, that they do follow and um, I make sure, like I said, on a daily basis that they're following those. Any questions that come up, I always refer back to Mr. Dukes because he's been in it, you know, over 40 years. So, um, but I do make sure they follow those. That, All those rules. Magic five, years. <laughs> <laughs> five years. Madam Chair, if, if I may, this is a, a prime example of how the Recreation Oversight Committee has helped not yes. only the department but have helped the citizens. We, ha we didn't have this position and I uh, took the recommendation to the Recreation Oversight Committee yes. and requested to have this position put in place because I think it's one of the most important positions we have right. is to keep that rapport. Uh, we appreciate all the volunteers that are out in the parks doing the work. And if we have a rapport with those people, we, we're not there to put our thumb on them. Yeah. We're, we have to follow rules and regulations. We're there to help them. If there's any way the department can help or assist in providing these programs to the youth, we want to do that. And the Recreation Oversight Committee approved Chad's position, and we took it to the board, and of course the board uh, complied. Yeah. So uh, 
That's another example of how the Recreation Oversight Committee has helped. Yes, well, excellent. And also, do you offer training for your coaches, uh, Chad? Yes, ma'am, we do. Uh, we that? make sure that all of our coaches are certified. Good. Uh, they use a program called NAES, National Alliance for Youth Sports. Uh, they have to go through that program. They have to show proof that they completed the program. And we also make sure that they're, all the coaches are concussion trained as well. Excellent. That's good for our youth to yes, make sure that we have an injury uh, and they were able to at least address it. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I call it triage it until we right. can get the EMS there. Okay. And they also uh, uh, work with uh, heat, uh, mm -hmm. make sure the coaches are, are uh, informed about water breaks and right. get, uh, people getting overheated and that sort of thing. Oh, so yes. we try to we try to work very closely with them on health related mm -hmm. issues for yeah. youth. Yeah, that's something we started uh, new uh, in the fall is we're offering a CPR yes, that's and important. AED training through mm -hmm. the Aquatic Center. And um, this actually on Sunday we have 20, 20 coaches and board members coming to get CPR certified. Excellent. That cardiopulmonary uh, mm -hmm. resuscitation component is very important. Yes, ma'am. And that's key. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, time sensitive. So when someone do go into a, have a problem or we have an emergency, we need to be able to address that. So that's, that's right. excellent. Um, I was talk, tell me a little bit about your staff. Do you have anyone work with you? Or are you a solo? I am a solo, solo operator. <laughs> operator. <laughs> He's out there by I'm himself. out there by myself. Yeah, but um, like I work closely with Tracy, um, the Aquatic Center. Um, so anytime I need help, they're always there. They're there for mm -hmm. you. And uh, one other thing, uh, Director Dukes, we uh, yesterday signed off. I guess you brought, uh, brought before the Board of Commissioners is the top. Tell us a little bit about this grant, the Clinton Reserve. Is it Clinton Reserve Park? Or? Clinton Nature Preserve. Nature, yep, Nature Preserve. Yes. Uh, from time to time, we uh, we have an opportunity to apply for our uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund grant, mm -hmm. which is uh, federal money, but it's passed down through the state, and the state actually am administrates the grant. And uh, we applied for a uh, $75,000 uh, yes. grant, uh, in-kind mm -hmm. match, which means uh, that we can match with our labor or with donations. We don't have to actually shell out the cash to match it. Right. So uh, that we applied to put a new trailhead at Clinton Nature Preserve. And mm -hmm. a trailhead meaning uh, it is a focal point in the park where people can come, it will have benches, hardscapes, restroom facility, wow. and from that point, they can access all the trails, whether it be walking trails, jogging trails, bike trails. It's a focal point. You can come and sit and read if you would like, or you can rest after you've walked, or you can have a picnic there. Uh, after you've walked or before you walk, or if you don't walk at all. Right. It's just an area that you can come, a leisure area where you can come and spend some time. But it is, the trailhead definition is a focal point to access mm -hmm. all the trails. Wow, that's that's exciting for Clint, uh, Clinton Nature Preserve. Yes. I know they're really excited. I'm excited, I'd probably come down and do some well, I know you've seen the one at Dog River. The, <laughs> yes, the, the, the trailhead at oh, Dog yes, River. Well, this will this gorgeous. will somewhat mirror the one we we built at Dog at River. At Dog River. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's a very nice one. Well, um, I really appreciate y'all coming today. This has been a great uh, session. You're doing great things here in Douglas County, particularly as it relates to park and recreation. I just wanted to say personally, from myself and the board of commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. We appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, we will have two more members from Parks and Recreation join this conversation. This is clearly on DCTV 23. We'll be right back. We will continue on where we left off. I'm so excited to have two new members of your team um, that are here as well. They have joined us, um, and I will ask you to introduce me to your team members. Yes, ma'am. We have Kelly Corkill, who is our Parks uh, Security Coordinator, and Welcome. we have Jim Gay, who is our uh, Aquatic Superintendent with us for this segment. Wow. I realize you 
your team is so large, you weren't able to bring everybody today. So if you could, I know you have a maintenance super, supervisor, someone who handles all the pesticides, herbicides. Tell us a little bit about his role and how that it impacts Douglas County Parks and Recreation. Well, uh, that would be Danny Denning, okay. and he is our park superintendent. Wow. And he was not able to be here today, but uh, Danny is uh, charged with maintaining all of our park property. Mm -hmm. uh, ball fields, uh, we maintain and cut all of our fields, all of our picnic areas, uh, maintain all the shrubbery, mm -hmm. trees, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the almost 2,000 acres of park land that we have. Um, we also have a, uh, when, we, when I took over in uh, 206, we didn't have any type of pesticide or herbicide or fertilization plan wow. for our fields. So we put together a uh, program mm -hmm. and uh, now we, we do our own. We uh, apply all our pesticides and herbicides and fertilization, which uh, before was farmed out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that saved the taxpayers uh, a considerable amount of money and uh, made sure that we were getting the uh, amount of fertilizer and uh, pesticides on our fields to have the best turf we can possibly have. Excellent. Wow. That's a huge job as it well. It is. Yeah. I think Denny just celebrated how many years with the county? Uh, I'm not sure how long Danny's been here, but he, w he was here previously and okay. uh, left and then came back and okay. uh, we were glad to have him back. Yeah. We need all the expertise and support. we. Uh, to move this mountain because this you have a super as I said earlier I call it a you have a super operation it's huge it's uh, spread out all over the county so you, and you have a lot of moving parts so again thank you for what you do uh, that leads into my next question or I have a question for uh, Kelly Corkle how are you today I'm good how are you yeah, tell me a little bit about park security I know that's a uh, uh, there's some huge shoes to fill. I mean, you got a big role and a lot of moving parts. Can you explain, tell me a little bit about your role and what you do here in the county? Sure, sure. We are a division of seven officers, including myself. I manage four full-time officers, two part-time officers, and we work 365 days a year, including all holidays. Wow, that, that is a lot. And, and some of the areas that you all patrol, can you talk about some of those areas if it's not... Uh, Top secret, I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not top secret. We patrol all the trails and all the parks in the county. Um, we also enforce all the ordinances of the parks. Mm -hmm. We open and close the parks. We also set the athletic field lights for soccer, baseball, softball, football. Where is your division headquarters? We are located at the old courthouse on Veterans Memorial Highway. Yeah. Okay. And you talked about your officers and you said full-time, part-time, and yes. some of your, your roles and responsibilities, do you all patrol certain hours? Is it a 24-hour operation? Can you talk about your hours? Op well, operation? on the weekends we operate from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. And during the weekdays it's 8 a.m. to about 11 p.m. And then you open and close the parks as well, or is that yes, a part of your responsibility? Every day we close the parks, and on the weekends we also open the parks. What time you, uh, t tell me a little bit about the openings, I'm quite sure everybody's like, oh, they open at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Our goal is always to have all the parks open by 8.30 in the morning. Wow, okay. And you, there's, uh, for you, some of your cars that are there routinely, do you have permits or reserve facilities, or can you talk about that a little bit? For the vehicles? Yeah, for your vehicles or anything like that. You know, is it required? If you have someone that's parking there every day, do you, is it requiring tags in the cars or anyone? If, if they park there every day, um, that's fine. That's not against the ordinances of the park. You can't park there overnight. Um, there are some ride share um, options at, say, Lithia Park, where they park there, they get there very early in the morning. Let's talk about traffic control. I know for some of our larger events, you probably have a lot of cars backed up and trying to get yes. in. Can you talk about the process and the coordination? Yes, a big part of what we do is 
provide security for the events in the parks and yes. for things like the Christmas event at Deer Lake. Oh, yes. Um, we have to make sure that the traffic goes smoothly there because it's a one-way route around, oh, yeah. around the track. So we have to make sure that somebody is bringing the cars in, directing them where to go, and then even when they leave, telling them exactly how to go out so that everyone's safe. Well, thank you. You said the key word, safe. Yes. Safety is very important, and uh, myself, the Board of Commissioners, and the citizens appreciate you, that safety component, because you have to have all ears and eyes open at all times yes. because of things moving around. And that, that, again, I just keep reflecting back on those moving parts. So we really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Here in Douglas, thank you. Mr. Gay. Jim Gay, tell me a little bit about boundary waters. I like the word waters. That means aquatic and uh, you can, a lot of swimming and it's fun. Tell me about your operation. Thank you for having me today. Um, we welcome. do, we start our days at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. Ooh. We have probably 150 kids come in and use the facility prior to opening to the public. And then they come back about 4 p.m. So we're, we're pretty busy from 5 a.m. to 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night, Monday through Friday. Then we're open on Saturdays. Um, we have about 40 staff people, five full-time, and somewhere between 30, 35 lifeguards at any given time. So my job is overall operation, daily operation, staffing, maintenance, and overseeing the programs that we offer. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I know you're excited about this new, um, I call it community center, but I know it's, what do we call it? Multi-purpose recreation. Multi-purpose. So you're excited about that when you have your hand in that pie when it when it uh, evolves and when it's ready, will you be part of that coordination or will you have oversight for that uh, building as well? We haven't discussed that yet. One, one thing we have been doing is we, over time, have tried to go ahead and get some programs started. Like this week, actually, we started some land fitness classes in our classroom there, and the hopes are is to grow those so when we have that facility opened up, we can kind of transition some of those in there. Um, I have a group of ladies that do land classes out of our facility and they're very dedicated and they offer a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and it's something that as we grow we've almost outgrown the space we have so the hopes are as we have that new facility we're able to kind of open that thing with some good programs already rolling so okay and swimming is very important to a lot of the parents here in Douglas County in particular as children learn to swim I wish I hadn't learned to swim when I was young I, if I can't stand it up in the water, I can't swim. You, I can swim as long as sh the water is shallow. But that's very important. Let's talk about some of your programs. You have swim lessons for, your, for our uh, students here, or should I say our children and youth, and for adults. Uh, talk about the, the lessons and requirements to be uh, engaged and involved in this swim program here in Douglas County. Well, our, our youth program is something that's grown drastically. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, I look at it as kind of the straw that stirs the drink there. Um, mm -hmm. We have about 750 to 800 kids that participate over a five-month period. Our registration begins in February. We do two months or three months, and then in the summertime we do a separate registration in May. And we have, you know, 750 to 800 kids. And I've been there long enough now to watch these kids not only graduate from this program and join the swim team, but to also come and actually work for me. And that's been, it's kind of a circle. And the, the program is great. It's probably one of the longest running programs we do uh, in-house in the rec department. Okay. And it's probably one of the most well attended as well. And it's really been a factor in the success in the recent years of the Aquatic Center. And also you offer lifeguard guard training. That's uh, important as well. So Correct. Is that how often does that training occur or? We started off with the lifeguarding classes as a program. Really what it's become over the years is we, we train our staff with it. Mm -hmm. What we found is if I can train them in-house in uh -huh. and have our staff watch them do this training, that's the best job interview you'll get. Right. So a lot of our lifeguards that come through our class, we try to do a class every month and most of them end up working for us in some capacity, whether it's a lifeguard or swim instructor. And then we have high school swim teams here, so I know that's uh, competitive. And are we competing with other schools outside of Douglas County? Are yes, ma'am. Every, every Thursday night, without, with the exception of the holidays, we have a meet. And these meets used to have about 100 people, and now they fill the parking lot up. 
Wow. Um, we went from, and I don't have the numbers exactly, but at one time our high schools probably had about 25 swimmers. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Coach Rick Blackstone yesterday, who's a swim coordinator, and they have 130 participants this year. Wow. And then also we want, we want to acknowledge the Special Olympics swim team as well. And can you tell me, is it the time frame, is it a certain time of the year that this, uh, the Special Olympics swim team come, or they come they, all the time? They begin their practices in November on a smaller scale because mm -hmm. it overlaps with some of the other programs. Mm -hmm. And when high school ends in, at the end of January, they ramp it up for, and they compete in May at summer games, mm -hmm. and that's their big um, event. They're kind of like their Super Bowl. And every year when they come back, I, they come back with a truckload of medals. So we've got That's 28 amazing. participants now in that program. And like, just like the high schools, many, a few years ago, we had eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And now they come in and take up both the pools. Wow. We, we also have the uh, recreation swim team, yes. which is our Douglas County Stingrays uh, that swim down there. How many uh, participants? Uh, they, have, they have 95 in their youth program and 20 in their adult program we just started. Excellent. So we, we have recreation teams. We are the home for all seven of the high schools in the county. Mm -hmm. They all have their meets located there. When we first opened the aquatic center, uh, there was only one swim team in Douglas County, and that was made up of students from all the high schools. Uh -huh. Since that time, all the high schools now have swim teams. So uh, wow. it's, it's just in, it, it evolved into uh, quite, quite the participation. The programs at the Parks and Recreation Division, they're growing by leaps and bounds. You all are doing some amazing things, 21st century things, best practice things uh, that will uh, set the standards for other places in the state of Georgia. Director Dukes, Kelly, and Jim, thank you for being here today. Really appreciate what's going on in the Aquatic Center, what you're doing in terms of security, and thank you just for holistically taking care of our parks and recreations here in Douglas County and directing all the activities. You have an amazing staff. You all are chasing best practice. You're setting standards where others will be judged. And I'm telling you, the Board of Commissioners are just superiorly, we are proud. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And uh, we, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank you and thank the Board of Commissioners because we, we couldn't do anything that we do without your support. And you, you and the Commission have been very supportive of Parks and Recreation. Well, you have our full support. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.